How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now a while back when we were still under a lockdown here in South Africa, uh, I was able to try out ASUS's massive 65 inch 4K 144Hz HDR1000 gaming TV. It was their PG65UQ which was an awesome awesome TV to use and well, luckily because of the lockdown I just couldn't take it back and I was able to use it actually for around three months which was just awesome to have but unfortunately it had to go back because it was massive and it was quite a bit expensive now I really love that monitor because again 4k 144 is HDR 1000 it had everything that you would really need and especially for a console gamer I think that TV would have been just a dream to own I actually just use it with my PC most of the time anyway so it's just like a massive massive computer monitor but the problem was again it had to go back it was super expensive and for most people I think it was a bit too big if your room is small <laughs> it's going to be the size of your room but now ASUS also have a, a different model that you can take a look at which hopefully I can get on the table here <laughs> there we go so this is the XG43UQ uh, gaming monitor TV I'm not sure where a TV gets classified then because of the size or so on because this is just kind of a smaller version of the PG65 UQ uh, 43 inches which is still pretty massive <laughs> uh, for to classify as a monitor but it's also not too big to be really a TV I think uh, but but anyway so this is just again a smaller version it still has 4k 144 Hz HDR 1000 and it doesn't have full G-Sync it's FreeSync Premium Pro so it's still G-Sync compatible um, and it's a lot cheaper so it's a thousand two hundred dollars to around thousand five hundred dollars so it's a bit cheaper compared to the i think it was like three thousand dollars for the other one so it's somewhat cheaper <laughs> but anyway we're gonna take a quick look unbox it for a bit uh, and then also try it out and see how it is because i'm super excited i'm sorry i'm looking at the camera there because i need to see if i'm actually in frame <laughs> because it's so massive but anyway let's quickly unbox it and uh, see how it looks <laughs> it's still quite a bit big now it's not that big but it's still whew. all right so first reveal i'm gonna reveal the back first because this one also has some rgb which you can't see right now and it's white which actually looks really nice now it might be a bit overexposed hopefully not too bad but honestly for me i like the white theme so this looks sharp and you can actually show it instead of just hiding it behind the wall if you wanted to so actually having it inside in the middle of the living room is actually an option but anyway let's we turn it around so you guys can see the other side Whew. so there you go not crazy massive big but it's still <laughs> pretty big now i'm going to put it on my desk and actually see if it if it fits uh and if it's not going to be too big so it might be i might need to be a bit further away but so again 4k 144 hertz if you're a console gamer variable refresh rate 4k 120 hertz so yeah <laughs> all right so inside of the box we just have our uh, calibrator, uh, calibration certificate because this should be around 90% DC, uh, DCI-P3 uh, color accurate. Uh, it does have a 0 .0, uh, um, 0 0.79 Delta E rating and a 97.01 uh, sRGB color space. So it's a pretty damn accurate. So if you want to do some color grading on it, that should be quite good for that you have plenty of stickers i'm not sure why this is inside the box which is inside the box but it tells you how you should take it out so that's already out <laughs> uh, we got a manual and then some hdmi cables some usb pass-through cables some display port cables we do have our what is this Oh, it's one of these. All right, so this is pretty cool. 
one million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. Oh, all right, all right, all right. So it's one of these. So the previous TV also had one of these. So what this is, is actually like a light that shines the ROG logo against the wall or wherever you want to put it. So if I put it like there, it's going to show the red, uh, maybe RGB, I'm not exactly sure, but it's going to show the ROG logo uh, shine it against the wall, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I believe you can buy these actually separate as well if you wanted to. So if you want to spice it up your setup a bit and then a remote which is actually really really handy <laughs> and then finally we have our our little little power cable all righty so i finally got everything set up and i have to say it's already so nice to use now uh, if you've used a, a tv before for gaming or just to use it with a computer you know the input latency is usually quite a bad and it just doesn't have that smooth feel to it but because this is more like a gaming monitor you don't have any of that this the input latency is spot on it's so smooth the 4k is so crisp they are 144 hertz uh it's so nice already used it for for a bit i haven't played any games yet but I've, i'm really excited and it just looks awesome but now 43 inches let me quickly just show you the difference uh because usually it's just a number but let me show you the difference between a 24 inch uh monitor and then also the 43 inches because it's quite a big difference and just to show you guys in perspective all right so this is a, a 24 inch monitor so that is the difference it's massive <laughs> it fits on my desk perfectly well um, and then also it's actually not that a bad sitting up close to it like almost right in front of it it's honestly not too big um a bit bigger would have been a problem but i'm um, sitting around like a uh, half a meter away it's actually not bad at all and, and also especially because of the 4k um it does doesn't have any pixelation or anything like that it's super super crisp but let me quickly just show you a closer look on the monitor and also at the back and the io and everything like that and then we'll get into some gaming and, and some other stuff so let's do that all right so there we have a bit of a closer look to with the monitor now it does it's not too thick actually and then also the bezels are quite a bit thin not too thick and also not too thin i don't think you can go too thin but anyway uh, you do have your rg logo right there also rgb rg logo right there which we'll take a look at and then also the feet i have to say is a uh, quite nice it does uh, keep the monitor nice and sturdy and then also pre um, prevents the monitor from just wobbling around now the desk does wobble a bit so you do have your v-shape legs which does actually keep it nice and neat as oh well, it doesn't take up too much space. You can actually still put something here if you wanted to. And then also the legs aren't too deep. So um, if you have a quite of a, a thin, let's say, um, plasma unit for, you, for your TV stand, then that shouldn't be a problem. I remember with the 65 inch model, I actually need to put a, a, a tabletop uh, <laughs> over my TV stand because it was just way too wide, it was around 45 centimeters uh, of 50 centimeters wide. So yeah, it didn't fit on my original TV stand. So we had to make a plan. But anyway, uh, I, I like it so far. All right, so quickly take a look at the back. Again, we do have the white version here. I'm not exactly sure if you get a black version, but the white does look very, very nice and clean. Now here you do have your ROG I. I would have actually liked if that was R RGB, but I think that would have added a bit too much heat towards the back. And also you probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have seen it, but anyway, it's just, <laughs> just an idea. Uh, you do have your Vesa mount holes right here. If you wanted to wall mount it, it's 100 uh, millimeter by 100 millimeter. Uh, and you just have uh, some uh, nice grooves going all around the monitor with some air ventilation uh, at the back and then also here at the top. Now, like I mentioned before, you do have your RGB, ROG, <laughs> I light shining on the desk and possibly you can turn it the other way around. It's not going to fit exactly, but probably you can do something then it can actually shine, shine like against the wall if you wanted to. But uh, otherwise it just shines 
on the de on the desk there and you can also again uh, change some of the configurations for the lighting effects now then as for your io you do have some here on the side which will go over but then also very nicely hidden behind here so you can just pop that off and look at my horrible cable management but then you have the rest of your io there so as for the io here on the bottom side you do have your power connector right there your usb b or usb mini for your rog light <laughs> and then also you do have your display port version 1.4 and then a two hdmi 2.1 ports but all three of those uh, ports does play a support of 4k up to 144 hertz and for the io on this side you do have your 3.5 millimeter in your 3.5 millimeter headphone out then you do have a two a USB 3.0 port that you just have to connect it towards your PC or your laptop to supply that so you do have a nice hub I do really appreciate that then you also do have a two HDMI 2.0 ports so all in all you have five ports that you can use for display HDM four HDMI's and one display port uh, um, and then also you do have a Kensington lock down there if you want to secure it in place so nobody steals it hopefully that doesn't happen all right, moving on. All right, so now that we went over the design of the monitor, let me quickly show you guys that we are indeed running at 4K, right? So we are indeed running 4K at 144 hertz. Uh, we got our 8 bits, uh, we got our RGB, we got everything going on there. So all nice and set to go. All right, so just like always for my color test that i do we're going to watch our costa rica 4k nature video and we're gonna bump that up all the way to 4k 60 and then we're going to watch it you can even try out the speakers so this is also a it does have a dual 10 watt speakers and it sounds pretty good so let's quickly take a closer look. Now, unfortunately, YouTube compression is, is of course not the greatest, but it's super crisp. It's bright. So again, we are gonna test out HDR 10 as well. So full 1000 in its brightness, which for games, HDR 400 is, you get that on a lot of monitors, but it's nothing close to HR1000 and unfortunately uh, even though I'm going to test it you guys won't really see the true impact of how good it actually is and that is pretty much the speakers are actually really good I don't even think it's on its loudest it's on 50 and that is a very nice looking snake <laughs> so the speakers are really loud uh, we can quickly listen to some music as well. And I have to say, the remote is really handy. We're going to go over the menu and so on, but you do have your volume that you can adjust right on the spot. You can adjust your input outputs of your uh, displays. It's on 16 and it's pretty loud. So, the, of course, the bass is a bit lacking. So, if you do want more bass, you probably want to get an external uh, soundbar or external speakers. But for me, it's, it's pretty decent. The, yeah, of course the bass, the bass is a bit lacking, but the highs are pretty clear. And also the mids are, are average, I would say. But for built-in speakers, dual uh, 10 watts, not bad at all. And honestly, I don't think you would really need to have external speakers, but you do have that option. All right, so moving on to some games. All right, so quickly, just before we get into some additional Call of Duty gameplay, uh, you do have a, of course, a VA panel, which does have pretty good viewing angles also. So no matter on which side you're on, you'll still be able to see everything nice and clear. And also the color infringement is not bad at all. Um, also, it does have a anti-glare matte coating on. You can see some of the lights from the, uh, the studio softboxes. Um, and also if it was sunlight, you would uh, see some of that, but it's definitely not bad. It's not one of those glossy gloss um, covers, which does get like 
bleed the, the, the light all over your display. So these, this does keep it to a minimum. But now let's we get into some gameplay. All right, so the first game that we're gonna play is of course going to be some Counter-Strike Deathmatch, uh, just to test out that 144 hertz, the input latency, some fast-paced games. We're gonna play some Dirt 3, and then also some Call of Duty Modern Warfare, um, and just, yeah, have some fun with it, because that's the problem with usually TVs. You can't play as easily as such fast-paced games where you need that precise uh, input latency, that precise precision. All right, I have to say it's a bit too large for me if I sit this close. I'll definitely have to sit a bit back. But it's so crisp, the 144 hertz is really nice. I can drop the volume a bit. All right, so the best way to really test out the input latency and everything is to try it with, with an AWP to see how easy you can get some flick shots in. And so, now nah, I'm usually really bad, so let's see what I can do. It's okay so far. There you go, it's a bit better. No, I died. All right, so now uh, we can quickly check out some of the uh, menu because you do have some nice um, gaming overlays that you can apply. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like them, but I actually use them quite often if I have them on a monitor. So let's quickly check them out. Now, I have to say, I really do like the remote that you get with it. Of course, it's just a basic remote, but you can adjust your volume. You can uh, put your shortcuts, your two shortcuts right there, your, your back, and then also your inputs, and then just control some of the menu. So we can quickly open up the menu right there. You do have your overclocking applied. So 144 is either uh, just normal 120. You do have your variable uh, OD right there. Your AMD FreeSync uh, Premium Pro, which is on. So it's not full G-Sync, but you do have just normal free FreeSync. Uh, you do have your uh, ELMB, if, which you can apply if you want to. You do have your Game Plus, which, which we're gonna check out. And then your Game Visuals and Shutter Boost and so on. It's not really needed, but you do have those options. Now for your uh, gaming plus effects, so you do have your crosser, which you can enable. So you do have a few if you wanted to apply them. Uh, I usually just pick pick the dot, depending on which game we want to play. Uh, luckily on this game, it doesn't really do anything. So we can go to our, our timer. Of course, you can apply that, although I haven't really used that at all. You do have your real time FPS counter along with the graph that you can apply as well. And that is going to be here up in the corner. So if I do move around, uh, it doesn't really drop at all. And I'm going to die. Don't kill me. All right, I'm dead but you do have that. Then you do also have your display alignment, and, and then finally you do have your sniper game plus effect, which I haven't actually seen yet. So let's quickly try that out. All right, so I'm testing out the sniper game plus effect. And what it does, it actually enlarges the middle section for your crosser, where it actually magnifies what you see so this time i have it on two times and it somewhat works but it's really distracting as well so if somebody just walks past it just instantly highlights but but you can see them ease more easily now unfortunately i don't have a console to really show you guys how that would look and perform all right i'm dead uh, but I, I can just imagine also playing at that 4K 100 and uh, 20 hertz is going to be so nice, especially if you haven't actually played at that high resolution and refresh rate. It's honestly a life change. <laughs> it's really hard to go back to just a 60 hertz. And especially if you do upgrade from like the 30 hertz that... There we go. Some of the ah, 
some of the uh, other uh, consoles usually run at, it, it's a life-changing experience. But so far, even though I'm also this close, you have to, again, move your neck if you wanted to see everything, but it's not <laughs> that bad. <laughs> and again, it's so weird having such a huge monitor but feel so smooth. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> and that was quick and easy. All right, so now let's get into where I really think this monitor can come in handy, uh, especially if you're, again, a console gamer, where you just want to sit back, not be as close to the, to the TV, we're still pretty close though, <laughs> and play some casual like racing games or, or RPG or something like that. So let's see what I can get up to. So I'm just going to play some a normal Dirt 3 and with controller. Now I'm not the greatest with controllers. <laughs> I've been playing PC all my life, so uh, bear with me. But I think this is where it really comes in handy, where it's still a nice and big. You don't have to be as uh, close, let's say with a keyboard and mouse. You can even play with a keyboard and mouse a bit further away on your on your lap if you wanted to. You want to chill on the couch and everything. Got the couch behind there, but it's not really set up for to film it properly. But this is so nice as well, where you can just chillax, it's, you're still gonna get everything that you really want out of it, your high refresh rate, your extremely high resolution, and a nice gaming experience. So, let's see <laughs> if I can actually do this. Get out of my way. Now, like I said before, some of my friends have play like uh, Full Metal 1 and so on uh, with, a, with a steering wheel and even they said this game crashed. <laughs> That's not the greatest. That shouldn't happen. That's probably where console is also a bit better. Games don't really just crash. <laughs> Alright, so unfortunately I couldn't get a Dirt 3 to work anymore. It just kept crashing. So we're going to try the next, next best thing and that is some dying light. Uh, where you can also chillax for a bit, use a controller, which I honestly do suck at. I'm just PC guy all around. And then kill some zombies, jump, jump around a bit, and have some relaxing fun. Because zombies is always relaxing, right? <laughs> so uh, we're going to see what I can do now. I'm really, really bad with controller again, like I said before. So don't mind me, I... Not even sure about all of the controls. I just wanted to show you guys that if you wanted to use it with controller, then or with console, of course, that's also going to be a really nice option. And uh, we can hunt some zombies. Don't make that face. Eh, eh. On the ground, you. Alright, I think there's a bit too many for me. So the new Dying Light 2 is of course coming out, so I actually want to play this again on keyboard and mouse um, and just get back into the game because I'm really excited for, for the new one to actually be released. But I think this is also where if you wanted to play more fast paced type of games so or for PC, you can sit up and close, it's not too bad, but even at this distance you can even go a bit further away and it's still going to be really enjoyable. You can still see everything is nice and crisp and zombie, zombie, zombie. Just kick them out of the way. Zombie. Some birds landing on my roof. Super immersive. <laughs> Woo! I think I should be here, right? Let's just get up. <laughs> I really suck with controller. <laughs> eh. No, no, don't. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Whee! Entering safe zone. But anyway, that's pretty much it for my look at the 
XG43UQ, I need to check the name from a ASUS, just a superb gaming TV a monitor, which you can use for both if you want to on your desk, uh, in your living room, again, depending on how large your living room is. Um, if, you're, if it's smaller, then this would still work really nice, but if it's large, of course, you want to possibly go for the 65 inch version, just a saying, <laughs> but for me, I would actually really like to use this as a primary monitor because I do play some games, but I primarily just also edit videos and do more work on it. And for me, if I do want to sit a bit further away, this is going to be so, so nice. The colors are so nice. Uh, again, being a bit more on, on the production side of things, I want a very nice color, color, uh, color graded monitor. And this is just perfect for that it's literally the best of all worlds not just both you get color accuracy you get the 4k you get 144 hertz you get a, a one millisecond response time it's so so smooth now it is again quite a bit expensive um being at around 1200 dollars 1500 dollars and here in south africa it's probably going to cost around like 50 grand but still <laughs> it's it's really nice and Honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with it. And I might actually need to need to get myself one if I have 50 grand lying around. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, blah, blah, blah. why did I mess that up? Please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. Big thanks to ASUS of Africa for sending the monitor TV over a four hour of video. Um, and if you guys want to get it for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. Not sure if it's available here in South Africa, really, I'll have to check again. Uh, but I do hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys. I can spot the chickens easier. Chicken? Where's the other chicken? Chicken. There you go.